Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining the session today. Good evening, and a uh, couple of minutes, and then we will start. Thank you, everyone. Good evening, and uh, we'll begin in a couple of minutes. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Good evening and welcome to SAP S4HANA overview session. We will begin shortly. Good evening, and um, thank you everyone for joining the session. One more minute and then we'll begin. I welcome you to our SAP S4HANA overview session. Thank you everyone. Thank you all. Okay, so let us begin. And um, thank you again. I welcome you all uh, to our this session. And I appreciate uh, your time. I appreciate you being here and attending to this session. Uh, and uh, welcome you all to this class and this session. Thank you. Um, yeah, good evening uh, to everyone. So before I move forward, I actually wanted to provide an, oops, okay. So thank you all. Let us begin. Good evening, Krupya. Good evening, Kasif. Good evening, everyone. And good evening to the everyone joining the class. Before I move forward, I want to recap. So I want to recap what we did in the last session. So what we talked about, what we discussed, what we did in the last session, and then good evening, everyone. Um, and uh, so that will give us a continuity of our dialogue. So we're trying to understand SAP as Bohana, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What I mentioned in the last class that SAP HANA is a database which came in 2011. So SAP HANA is a database, in-memory processing database. 
And I also mentioned that as if you don't like calling it database, they call it a platform, not database. And um, then SAP S4 HANA is a new generation ERP. And this ERP came in 2015. So this is the new uh, dimension ERP, which is available um, since 2015. I also mentioned in the last session that this is evolution since 1972. SAP started in 1972. So it's almost 48 years old company. It's a very old company from that perspective, actually. 40 year, 48 years is a pretty long time. So SAP R1 in 1972, it is used to be called SAP R2 in 1979, SAP R3. 1992, ECC in 2004, and SAP S4 HANA in 2015. So this is the evolution journey, which we have in SAP ecosystem. In SAP ECC, enhanced Princep 7 could be migrated or could be used on HANA database. So, HANA database because it came in 2011. So if somebody using ECC and enhancement pack seven, they could use HANA database. They could migrate their SAP ECC 6.0 box onto HANA database. That was possible. And SAP S4 HANA only support HANA database. So the SAP's glory of being database independent, that glory is gone. SAP is now, SAP S4 HANA only works in HANA database. This word is probably is the synopsis of everything. Really real time really real time i talked about this and why we say really real time because of these two things we talked about there is something called oltp which is online transaction processing and then we talk about olfpp which is online analytical processing right oltp is basically where we do our transaction and OLAP, where we do our analytic processing. Earlier, OLTP and OLAP was two boxes, and two separate boxes. BIBW was one box, and ERP was another box. And these two boxes are connected, although they were the bridge between them, but that bridge was not real time. Data was being synced up in a daily, weekly, or whatever period it is, but not in the actual real, real time. It is, there was a time delay. And because it was a time delay, therefore it was never an actual a real time. Two systems. And they are connected, they have a bridge. But the data flow between them on certain periodicity. Therefore, technically, they could never be real time, and they were indeed never the real time. There was a problem. Now, that is a, one of the biggest architectural change. Because now, OLAP and OLTP both can be in the one box. It doesn't need to be in two different boxes. And another thing was that our ERP, it was storing the data in tables. And those tables are two dimensional tables. There's the rows and there's the columns. 
and OLAB, which is online analytic processing, it was storing the data in multidimensional cubes. Two different ways of storing data. They are not being stored in the same fashion. That basically means one form of the data transform into another form. So this is a transformation. New avatar. And when there is a transformation, you can never be real time. And I worked on so many clients, and people always question information coming from business intelligence. So we had this BI or BW boxes. Nobody trusted that. Nobody believed the data in BIBW, although very fancy. Nobody believes because not a real time. And it, it gets into too many transformations. Think about it. In ERP, you are storing the data in two dimensional tables. And in your BI, you are storing the data in multi dimensional queues. So there is no one to one match. It get it need to get transformed, and this lost a lot of loss in translations. That was a problem. Okay. So there was a time lag, and there was all these problems. Now this issue is solved. If somebody says, "What is the biggest benefit? Biggest solution? Biggest aha?" moment which is coming from SAP S4 HANA is that now you have OLTP OLAP into one box. No two box theory. Single box. Single version of the truth. Okay. So fundamentally what is the difference with ECC and S4 HANA? So that is one version which is that is the architectural difference only one database it supports. And uh, when we talk about the presentation layer, the functional consultant works. So a lot of your transaction code, let me give you good news. The good news is a lot of your transaction code in sales order and purchase order and good receipt and good issues and general entry and general voucher, customer invoice, vendor invoice, all those financial sales, purchasing logistic transactions. Most of those transactions are same. Some transactions are gone. So I give you some example in the last time that a lot of these customer vendor transactions are gone. They are not more supported. Um, and like XD01, XD03, and four these transaction code. Actually, there are more like MB1A, MB1C, MB1, MB012. Those a lot of these transactions, in fact, are gone. In fact, SAP has thrown a lot of that transactions out because there were a lot of I wouldn't say obsolete. I will say there were a lot of um, overlaps. So a lot of such transaction codes are gone. But a lot of your transaction code, which you learn in ECC 6.0, almost most of them are carried forward. And uh, for the all business partners, you have a transaction code BP. So, so when you are creating your customer vendor or all business partner or any of these business partner then you have a one transaction code bp business partner okay actually sap as Pohana has removed more than they have added a lot of modules are gone like you have to have export module is gone import module is gone because you have a gts so now it, everything moved to the gts we talked about. now there is something called fury now, let me tell you, Fury is not developed for SAP S4 HANA, by the way. Fury can be used on ECC2. So if you use the ECC 6.0, you can use Fury in ECC 6.0, and you can also use Fury on SAP S4 HANA. Fury is just an additional user interface. You can use this user interface in HANA. You can use your this user interface Fury on ECC 6.0. Also, you have to have ECC 6.0 enhancement pack seven. 
before that you cannot do. But you can do that in both sides. And I also mentioned that why SAP has come up with a fury, what is behind it, what is the philosophy behind it, because SAP is finding that they are becoming, there is a problem with them. And problem with them was that, like when you try to log into SAP GUI, yeah, the, most of you are available and aware of this SAP GUI thing, right? This is your SAP GUI, correct? If you're trying to go to SAP GUI, of course you can uh, you can install and uh, you can go into the log on and log in and all that as you all aware and which you're using GUI for your training and before training and all that and after training and your project, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem with the GUI is this GUI does not work. This GUI does not work on tablets, smartphones, and many of these smart devices. Now the computing is moving towards the smart devices. So Fury was, so SAP has come up with this Fury primarily to make them applicable for different hardware platforms. So that is the primary concept of using Fury. Okay. One more hour. So we now we're going to talk about what is simple finance, what is simple logistic, and we're going to give them some overview about it. And then we'll continue with our discussion today. So this was a quick uh, overview. I just want to make sure that uh, all of you understand um, what we have discussed so far. Now we continue from where we left in the last class. Okay. So we go to something called simple finance. So finance and simple. These two terms doesn't go together anyways, but uh, they come up with this concept and this product, I would say, um, something called simple finance. Now, what is the simple finance? So what do you see in your, look at very carefully. So you have VKPF, VSEG, 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 VIS, VIS, VSIK, VSEG, these and many more. These are the different tables. Your VSEG is one of your primary finance tables. So when you're doing a financial posting, posting on a financial document, all these tables which are there in front of you, some of them, all of them, they get updated. There are, look at here, 10 inserts in five updates. So when you post a typical financial transaction, you have five inserts and three update to the database tables. That's what's going on behind the scenes. When you post a document, you don't observe what's going on, right? So when you post a financial document, you don't pay attention to that what is going on. But that's what actually happened, 10 inserts, and five updates. Aha. With a simple finance, number one, all these different tables which are gone, 
one two three four five six eight nine ten those tables are gone you are left with the two table vkpf vsag those are the two primary tables and then look at here you left with the only four inserts you still have to talk to database of course ana is also database ultimately data is still get stored in the database but look at here it gets is get insert from 10 to 4 update null zero no update that is a drastic change in the backend database entry no indexes no aggregates no redundancies now that is the basis for bringing the speed that is the reason for bringing the quickness and fastness and ability to enter in a simple logic if you have less work to do if you have less inserts less update less tables your performance goes up that's it now let's understand in 2014 sap came with something called simple finance version 1 yeah 2014 now the simple finance is also nothing to do with s4 hana by the way because simple finance came before sap s4 hana SAP S4 HANA came in 2015, and Simple Finance came in 2014. Okay, so don't think that Simple Finance has something to do with S4 HANA. Simple Finance can also be there in ECC. Okay. So that is. important point to understand in 2015 we came simple fi fi finance version 2 is a week and it no they are tables 2014 came simple finance version 1 2015 came simple finance version 2 so before sap s4 hana came simple finance already had the two versions yeah then when uh, sap s4 hana came now it that simple finance term is gone now this is called sap s4 hana finance now what is the there are so many different changes so what are the changes so we talk about changes in the database that is the fundamental change so number of tables are gone is normally 1 to 10 if your 10 terabyte data you left with 1 terabyte 9 terabyte data is gone lot of secondary tables are gone lot of tertiary tables are gone now sap look at here there is a concept called universal general this is one of the a fundamental change which sap has bought into this call fundamental general power of one table acd oca this is the table in which it is a single accounting repository so in the single in the simple finance there are so many things we can talk but if we talk of the fundamental change and one of the primary change it is coming to universal general now what is the universal general universal general is post now what happens is posting to various individual ledgers material ledger asset accounting controlling and all those different multiple set of it is posting to one unified general so that basically means when you had these multiple journals and entry to multiple journals 
then all those journals are gone you have a single journal and it is a single table which is acdoca what is the big deal because now you are not keeping multiple instances of data earlier data go to fi then it go to co and it go to this object it go to that object one data going to multiple places now all those journals are are replaced with universal journal again multiple data sets goes with one data set one set of proof what is the benefit of it obviously this is the benefit sap has elevated one big point real time reporting and analytics real time now what is going on pay attention here i'm not talking about erp and bi and bw that was a fiasco anyways now in the finance there was a fiasco within the finance in co modules because within the fico that there was a entry in the finance and in co in this ledger and that ledger and one data going to multiple ledgers not a singular truth and that was a big problem now singular entry and you become real real time remember this word if at the end of these my 2 hour class if you remember one word remember really real time this is example universal journal that's why it become simple finance that is why as we come with this fancy word called simple finance because you don't have a multiple words in a two there just one set of table one journal one place of data and you fetch from there and you do reporting analytic whatever you want to do and hence they come with this concept called simple finance of course these are the benefits so when you are doing finance suite with sap s for hana uh, you know in terms of performance it improves so these are different perform parameters um if you look at it here if you have 1.8 terabyte of the data it become 500 gb data which with the database get drastically reduced even if you see the finance with hana and the sap s for hana still your database reduction is drastic if you see here Uh, it's just 1.8 terabyte to 500 gb terabyte that basically means is almost 75% database is gone so you have almost 2 terabytes and it's now here we have a you know 5 terabytes so that gives you you know 3 times 4 times more performance in all aspects is simple arithmetic now we come to simple logistic now these are the different tables if you look at it here mkpf mart mark there are a lot of must material master material documents during good moments good seed good issues which you do so there is a material document material document has behind the scene different tables material master so these are different tables you see that all all these are the different tables sap sap in logistic with aggregates and indexes what the fiasco was going on with the database you have a primary tables you have a secondary table you have a something called tertiary table you have a aggregation tables then you have indexes so there is a lot of jungle of the data behind the scene so for example if you save a material master it goes to multitude of the tables 
Mara, Mar, Mard, MBKE, etc., etc., many others. You enter a sales order, a data goes to multiple tables. You enter a purchase order, data goes to multiple tables. I saw that when you do a financial posting, data goes to multiple tables. Sometimes 5, 8, 10, 12, 15 tables data going in, in one transaction. One material master, data goes to multiple tables. And then there is a secondary table. And then there's a tertiary tables. And then they're linked with the primary and secondary key relationships. They are connected to each other too. So as many of you have all this jungle of the data of transaction, the, the thicker is the jungle, slower you can walk into it. If you have so many trees, and if you have a thick jungle, you can't walk faster. And if your jungle has less a tree, you have more space, you can move faster. Simple analogy. And that is the core of SAP S4 HANA architecture because a lot of those tables are gone. If you, if you close that, now we left in the simple logistic from the database perspective, all those tables are gone. All the jungle is clear out. Now I can see. Now you have a thicker the jungle, you cannot really see across the jungle. You cannot walk fast in the jungle. You can crawl. Now you have lesser tables. You can move fast, you can run, and you can see across. Therefore, it becomes really real time. So your reporting becomes faster, your performance becomes higher, it becomes high velocity, speed is high, performance is high, throughput is how is high. And all that is coming from this be behind the scene data architecture. No indexes, no aggregates, no redundancies. Okay. Now, what are the, so we talked about universal general. Yeah, there are many other things, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually talking the major points. Otherwise, you speak. You know, there's a full life, full life course I'm planning to do, but uh, that's a different story. So here, look at here. Improve customer service level, minimize exceptional handling, drastically simplify data model. Drastically simplified data model we have talked many, many times. I'm not going to spend more time into it. Now, what they have done in Hana. They make ATP better, available to promise. Because what happens is when you're doing available to promise, available to promise goes to many, many tables actually. The available to table, as you guys might be aware, goes to sales order, go to purchase orders, go to production order, go to inventory, go to the past orders, go to the future purchase order, go to future production orders. So when you're doing available to promise, all the process is simple. But the data, which is goes and access, is challenging. Because you're looking at the various data points when you're doing ATP. Now when you have HANA, then you can execute better. There used to be something called back order processing. Backorder processing is a functional DNSD module which allow you to reschedule your orders based upon some parameters. You could never run that program in the real time. 20 years of my SAP doing, I'm almost 300 years old. We never run this backorder processing program in the real time always run in the background because it takes so many data points. Now you can do it real time. There used to be a, some, something called demand supply. There is BOM labels, MD04. There is a transaction code which look allow you the stock situation. You couldn't do that in the real time before. 
because when you're looking at the entire demand and supply situations across all bombs label and the bomb can have a different label there's a parent and the sub item and assembly then assembly has a sub assembly sub assembly have another sub assembly the sub assembly has another item and another component the gazillions of items yeah so for example if you're making a car right if you're making a car how many component goes and make many many thousands of component goes and making one car how do you do the planning in the real time you can't but you can do it in sap s4 hana so that is the benefit of it you are 300 old and is still very young <laughs> sanjay ji namaste uh, <coughs> now mrp planner now another thing was the mrp planner so you could never run mrp in the real time which you can do now okay. and obviously your reporting become better and you become data model we already talked about same data concept 1 to 10 if you have 10 direct terabyte become 1 terabyte because a lot of tables are gone so very simplified database because a lot of these benefits lot of these benefits which we see in sap s4 hana they are driven from one singular point they are driven from the point back in the database lot of junk tables are gone lot of junk tables are gone lot lot of all these secondary primary tables are gone 1 to 10 means almost 70 80 90% of tables are gone it's like 1 to 10 people says 10 terabyte works in 1 terabyte so it's still 70% tables in the backend are gone and that brings the change which we talk about sap s4 hana So that make it is speed faster, quicker. This, that, and a lot of things which you do background. You can the real time, and you can do analytic reporting, everything else. So all the things is driven from that one source, simplified database. Okay. Some of uh, key benefits of in materials management and operations, and some of these uh, process perspective. The one is MRP. so now you can run mrp more in the real time means mrp you could you were running before too but now the benefit you can run this mrp more in the real time we talk about inventory management in inventory management lot of this transaction code mb1a mb1c b mb1c uh, mb01 mb02 mb03 those transaction code are gone migo is there and migo is primary table so for the mm people yeah if you want the differences so for inventory management so now a lot of those tables are gone transactions are gone you have a single version too material valuation has changed and how material valuation has changed now we have gone to concept of multiple table to universal general so because the universal general now you have a different material valuation we talked about atp now atp got changed because now you have enhanced atp capability so that enhance you see that or advance atp so that advanced atp capacity was not there before now you have that advanced atp capacity which you can do before and then we have back order processing so there is a transaction called back order processing which was always running in the back order and like always background you can run the real time capacity planning you had in the that capacity planning this was the function in ppds ppds means production planning and ds means data demand scheduling in apo we had a sub module called ppds this ppds was used for production planning and demand scheduling lot of that thing you can do in the real time which you couldn't do before okay same thing in order processing and billing we talked about from the mrp perspective and in the procurement now you have everything uh, process and you have a several report and analytics which they put into and of course there is a riba network okay 
the value sap s o hana now this is what look at this some of the point which i have highlighted important points built on sap s o hana so database is hana based database now the second bullet point is very important pay attention to the second bullet point please erp crm srm scm plm in one system this is very very important statement please make a look at it erp crm srm scm plm in one system what is the meaning of that is erp crm srm scm plm in one system earlier crm was in separate system srm was in separate system apo was in separate system plm was plm is product life cycle management scm is supply chain management like apo srm is supply relationship management and crm is customer relations management for the people who don't know these terms now this is very very important you have all these different boxes erp one box crm another box srm another box scm another box plm another box and they are separate boxes and then you have to connect you can never be real time so there is a pain of connection and then multiple set of data so erp has a database crm has database erp has a database apo has a database then they are connected never matching we are blaming each other you are wrong i am wrong you are wrong i am wrong now this all gone no connection everything in one box every system erp crm scm plm they are using one database now in one box in one landscape one architecture and thus immensely powerful and what is the benefit of that you get 10 times smaller data footprint that is important 10 terabyte then you need only 1 terabyte throughput goes out 7 times your reporting analyst becomes super fast because you have a less in the when your jungle is not thick you can move fast other you are crawling so 90% of your tables are gone so obviously you get a of reporting and this is important and because now you have lesser steps also specifically lesser steps come when you are using fury because now so when for the user it become more effective and productive in terms of key strokes so they have less key strokes going forward reimagine business model okay now look let's look at this sap s1 a unique value for it and users user this is ecc in gui and this is on fury so for the user the biggest benefit they get fury they can use fury if they want to system configuration uh, well i don't know about that part means is a guided configuration lot of configuration you can do you still do the same configuration spro so what we spro we have been using from our childhood so same spro apply nothing problem but this one is the critical important reimagined data models this is the primary source of every improvement we think of you have a traditional database you have multiple tables and you go to in the memory processing platform sap has a problem calling it database they always call it platform so that's the benefit payment clearing video so people did some uh, sap s1 a new user exit with the fury screen uh, incoming payment from the customer sap gui sap fury how many minutes how many minute how many keystroke how many clicks 
how many screen chairs how many screen chairs how many fill how many fill has to be filled how many fill has to be filled and what is the reduction in the duration what is the reduction in the clicks what is the reduction in the screen chairs what is the reduction in filled field that is the benefit for users is a case history so here is your gui here is your fury okay and uh, if you see that invoice clearing in gui if you see invoice clearing in uh, fury in sap as hana data entered 9 versus 3 screen 26 into 1 duration 2.25 minute to 1.01 minute and 49 clicks versus 22 clicks that become the basis for speed velocity more output and the benefits of hana versus non hana system now look at the database now look at this is um, ecc 6.0 working the traditional database means oracle in most cases and uh, you have a traditional database which is oracle and if you move your ecc 6.0 now on the hana so this is hana then what happens so we basically bring it in 6.0 on the hana database so up to 5x look at here footprint reduction footprint reduction footprint reduction basically means how much database get reduced 5x so that basically means if you are working on ecc 6.0 on oracle and if you go to ecc 6.0 on hana and if you are using 5 terabyte of the data you left with the 1 terabyte of the data that is what this basically means and now if you go to sap s for hana and if you are using hana database then you can reduce this further 2.5 time that is further so if you go to sap as for hana then you get another reduction in the data footprint 2.5 now look at here so erp on any database which is hana database uh, which is the oracle database simple application enterprise software of big data and agility reduce data footprint now look at here if you are looking at erp on any database like an oracle if you require 7.1 terabyte then erp on hana erp on hana from 71.7.1 terabyte goes to 1.8 terabyte and if you go to sap as for hana then it become 0.8 terabytes so that basically means your system performance database footprint reduced from 7.1 terabytes to 0.5 terabytes that is the reduction of the database size you get jungle you have reduced that's correct that many number of tables gone that's true so if if this is your this is your oracle the classical ecc and oracle database so if you are using 7.1 terabyte and if you migrate to sap as for hana then you are left with the 0.8 terabyte 7.1 terabyte to point Eight terabyte. That degree of reduction you get. So that is the fundamental meaning of this is. And because you get this reduction in the database footprint, you have less of the jungle. Everything comes with it. So when you see this higher throughput and speed and flexibility and everything, everything is. derivative of the same thing 
and that bring the fundamental change in terms of your reporting analytic output etc 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 okay this is sap driver for sap s4 hana architecture let's look at this picture so here in the bottom we have sap hana database so this is sap hana database in yellow box so this is hana database yes s4 hana and then this is your erp now look at this here you have erp your crm your scm your plm so srm everything in the same box and they are accessing the same database so the same database this is a very important slide actually i i search this slide a lot because this slide is important to understand the architecture because this slide present an architecture change yeah so in this uh, we have a erp we have a crm we have scm the plm srm they they used to be different boxes different databases now if you see here all of them going back to the same database one database going same table so if i have let us say sales order table so same sales order table going to erp same sales order table going to crm same sales order table going to scm same sales order going to if i have a business partner if i have a customer same customer going to erp same customer going to crm same customer going to scm same customer going to plm same customer going to srm if it is applicable earlier that was not the case erp have their own customer crm have their own customer and then you are synchronizing them earlier erp has their own vendors srm have their own vendors then you are synchronizing them now don't need to do that so this is hana database hana database looking into sap gui and then when we talk about fury user sap user interface html5 so sap fury is written in html5 html5 is a technology programming language in which sap fury is written you can have a, you can access to mobile everything else this is the architecture of sap s4 hana okay this is the architecture of sap this is very incredible yes it is okay now this is sap s4 hana analytic architecture so we have a sap hana database layer okay. then this is this is sap s4 hana platform you see that sap hana platform and why sap has a problem calling it database yeah and they don't call it database but it call it platform because of this look at this picture because and why they call it platform not the database because here they have a database where you have a physical tables where actual tables are there where the data is stores but along with this table they have another layer on the top of it that layer is called sap hana views which is a bunch of programs which is a bunch of ab programs so when you look at the sap hana it is not just the database which where uh, the physical tables and data get is stored it also have this abap layer and because of this abap layer 
and this all come together that is why they don't call necessarily sap hana database but they call it sap hana platform okay because it has two things it has a database layer and it also has a ABAP layer. ABAP layer means HANA views. Views basically means many times, run time, you have a bunch of programs which is fetching the data and manipulating the data in the real time. And then look at this picture. So when you're, you, when you're looking at uh, your um, transaction analytic applications, yeah, hybrid, your cockpits and all that, it goes to tables and fetches the data. But when you're going to your Apple and your business analytics, then it is normally reading the data from the HANA, HANA views, okay? And that is why this is architecture and how SAP HANA platform looked like. Customer journey. So SAP HANA, SAP S4 HANA is available on premises, in cloud, or hybrid. In premises means you install in your company. Cloud basically means you have somewhere in the cloud. There are many cloud companies, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure. Hybrid basically means combination of both something in Premises, something on cloud. What is the choice of deployment? So you have three scenarios. What are those three scenarios? So we have a new customer. And uh, if you're a new customer, then you, know, you can go to on-premises, deploy new installation, wonderful. Then you have a starting point B, you have a SAP business suite on any database, on any DB customer, you're a new customer. You don't have a SAP at all. If you don't have a SAP at all, you have a choice one, choice two, choice three. If you're already using SAP on Oracle, then what you can do, you can go to, again, three choices, on-premises, cloud, hybrid, but, but you can upgrade and migrate database to HANA. Here, you have a deploy new installation. So this one, so if you look at this one, you have to deploy the new one. Here, you have a choice of database migration. And if you have SAP Business Suite powered by HANA, then your migration is even, you're basically doing exchange innovation. So starting A, starting B, starting C, you can start from any point. If you are a new customer, well, in your case, then it is a new installation. If you are already a SAP customer, but you are using Oracle or any other database, then you can do database migration. If you are using SAP S4 HANA on HANA database, then you can do exchange. In most cases though, most cases, when people use SAP S4 HANA, normally it is not the database migration, normally normally it is the new implementation that's what normally happens okay roadmap so we have uh, sap s4 hana on premises it came um, in q1 of 2015 SAP S4 HANA public cloud, it came in two, Q2 of 2015, public cloud. Public cloud basically means 
Amazon Web Services, my Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure. Those are the three big public clouds. There are many others. Then you have managed cloud, which is SAP S4 HANA. That SAP came in Q3 of 2015. Now SAP keep giving quarterly innovations, and here you keep getting early innovations. That's what is going on. SAP S4 HANA on premises transition options. You can upgrade, you can transition, you can migrate, but in most cases, in most cases, most people do a new implementation of good transition migration path is underway. So th this is a more detailed view of why it is called SAP HANA platform. Because I told you last week that I will told you, I will explain to you why it is not called HANA database and why SAP call it a HANA platform because of this picture. Because it is a database services, which is where you have a store tables, physical table. But on the top of that, they also have application services in which they have a program, JavaScript and others. And the bottom, they also have integration services, which allow you to integrate with other applications. And all of them three are combined. That is why SAP called this as an SAP HANA platform. They do not call it a SAP HANA database per se. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. thank you. And uh, it's my email address, these are that my thinky.com. And uh, I think my phone number also, I think if you don't, most of you should have it already, I guess. But if you want, so 973, 885, 7245. So, so that's my mobile phone, you can call, email me, and uh, you're very welcome. So this is what I was planning to talk to you guys about and give you a little bit of a perspective on SAP S4 HANA. And um, so I wanna thank you all. And uh, many of you I already know, some of you probably I don't. So thank you, thank you very much. Okay, a few words. Thank you very much, thank you all. So, and 973-885-7245, uh, that's my cell phone number, and that's my mobile phone, and my email address. Okay, thank you all, and uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. Bye, guys. You are the best. <laughs> Killing me, Rahul. Okay, bye, guys. Thank you. Take care. Bye, guys.